The Wilms tumor is the most common tumor in children under 15 years of age. It has a heterogeneous histological structure which determines the characteristic of its prediction and current. Depending on the histological type and the stage of the tumor, treatment and forecasting approaches can vary considerably. And unlike the tumors of an adult kidney, the face of a Wilms tumor depends not only on the local spread of the tumor, its size, the incorporation of a nod capsule or a capsule of the kidney, the callus's pelvis system or the renal vessels, but also the state of the surgical edge of resection and the involvement of regional lymph nodes. This imposes certain characteristics on the macroscopic examination of such material, which we will try to illuminate today. In the case of Wilms tumor, as in the case of the macroscopic study of any other kidney tumor, our research begins with the test request form that comes first to our hands and we must make sure that it corresponds to the person whose material we have brought to us. Age, localization, clarify the amount of operation performed and the markings we have delivered, that is, the object we are supposed to study. We have a kidney tumor and lymph nodes in this test request form. The data corresponds to the test request form and we can start examination. The first thing we have to do is direct the material, determine where it has the top bottom, the front back and position it relative to itself accordingly. It is a right kidney. On the front surface it is resected part of the peritoneum, it's shiny. In addition, nephroadrenalectomy, the adrenal gland margin is at the top pole, which actually looks at you. We also have identifiable structures of kidney gates and ureter. After that, we must capture the sample using a camera or a macro-imaging device. The patient's data has been previously entered on the electronic card. The object is photographed from both sides. Next, we must investigate everything we have been given to the surgical edge of the resection. In other words, are there any plots that are suspicious of a positive surgical area? These are areas where the kidney capsule or the tumor capsules are damaged. In this case, we can see only the part of peritoneum which is carved out by a surgeon. The only thing in this place is a small piece of retracted tissue that can be involved in a tumor. And we can label this section using tissue dyes with special color. For the paint to get better with the claws, it is better to dry it. The better the tissue is dried, the better the dye sticks to the tissue. And, of course, the sample that has been delivered to you is supposed to be unfixed. Fixed samples bit tissue dyes very poorly. And this prevents both macroscopic particular study of the Wilms tumor and the adequate cut. After you've finished coloring, give the paint time to dry up a bit so it doesn't smear. Next, we need to thoroughly examine the entire perineural fat for the presence of lymph nodes. In cases of the Wilms tumor in children as opposed to adults, this phenomenon occurs much more often, both in the perineural fat and in the fat of the kidney gate. In addition, we must identify the structures of the gate, namely the renal artery, which is marked by a clip, the renal vein, which is stapled, and ureter. The edges of the resection of these structures we can take to work either now or after the sample is fixed. Our next step is to stain the entire circular surgical edge. 
of the specimen that was delivered to us. For this, as I've mentioned before, it's better to dry up the material. The more carefully the sample is dried, the better the dye sticks to the tissue. All parcels, including the kidney gate, and of course the entire circular edge of the resection and the fat of kidneys are painted. This is necessary for adequate surgical staging, because the presence of a positive surgical edge resect changes the stage of the Wilms tumor, and this requires more aggressive treatment in primary mode. The paint will be completely dry in two or five minutes. So, not to waste time, we shall measure and weigh the sample while the paint is drying up. The sample must be carefully measured in three dimensions, all together, including the perineural fat. And then weighed. 710 grams. After the sample has been dried up, the kidney is dissected to prepare to commit to the exterior surface with a longitudinal section. and then opened in a form of a butterfly. At this point, we must also fix the surface of the kidney cut. And at this point, we must measure the tumor knot. You can see it is rounded. There is a part that goes beyond the tumor's capsule to the kidney parenchyma. We also measure tumor in three dimensions. We can also evaluate the relationship with the kidney capsule, the calysis pelvis system and the structures of the kidney gate. We can also assess the condition of the remaining kidney tissue, the presence of some additional entities, additional nodes or nephrogenic residues. In addition, microscopically we have to evaluate the area of necrosis and hemorrhages and the so-called chemotherapy, inducted changes, first of all, necrosis. The other changes are evaluated in microscopic way, but macroscopically may look like sections of fibrosis or edema or stroma and cystic changes. By using microphotography or macrophotography, we can estimate them quantitatively, and it is a good idea to indicate their percentage in a macroscopic description. In addition, if it is possible or necessary, a material for molecular genetic research may be taken out of a native kidney tumor that is unfixed. We take a section of a tumor of about one cubic centimeter, with half of it being placed in the test tube for freezing, and the half that mirrors the change in the excerpt should be fixed and investigated histologically. Apart from a ruler, we can use the EPATH macroimaging system to measure the macro sample. This system includes a range of tools that allow us to measure the sample. So, a kidney after the fixation looks like this. It's in the shape of a butterfly. Here we can evaluate the relationship of the tumor with the calysis pelvis system. 
It is a narrow pelvis. The tumor is on both sides of the pelvis. Residual tissue of kidney is fringed to the periphery. A section of necrosis. There's still lots of necrosis here and here. Cystic changes in this zone. Another cup. This is a kidney artery. And this is a kidney vein. Here we have the ureter. There are expanded lymph nodes of kidney gate fat with distinct counters. We have to take the edge of resected ureter. The edge of the kidney vessels. And then we get all the discovered lymph nodes of the kidney gate. Then we must cut the plate, which includes a complete cut of the tumor with the tissues and structures that are adjacent to it. There are the rest of the kidney tissue, a pelvis, a capsule painted, a section of necrosis here. Then we divide this plate into fragments, which size is the same as the cassette according to the size of the last one that we use. Either these are standard cassette or mega cassettes, if possible. The resulting fragments we mark, so we have a map of fragments that we have to photograph or draw. And it is used in future to map to microscopic data. Additionally, we need to examine all macroscopic different tumor areas, as well as all the parcels that have been marked separately, either previously colored by us or tagged by a surgeon. In addition, if there are lymph nodes that we have not previously taken, we must take and investigate them. All sections of the tumor's diligence to pelvis, ureter or kidneys vessels have to be investigated. Also, if there are tumor nodes other than the main ones, we have to get them into work. Kidney and perineal fat sections suspected of tumor infiltration, section of diligence or infestation into neighboring structures and bodies should be investigated. In addition to this, at least two pieces of unchanged kidney tissue need to be taken up. If there are lots of altered kidney tissue that is suspected of having nephrogenic residues, you have to take them. The resulting fragments are fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin within 24 hours. Then they are received in the standard program transaction. In microscopic examination, we should characterize a viable tumor. Each of the presented components and its share, as well as the proportion of the chemotherapy, induced changes. In addition, we must evaluate the surgical edge of resection and hurt the tumor and define its predictive group.